Hey, we're back in the main game after a fun month of leaks 4. So much wild stuff happened though right before leaks that I didn't even get to show you guys. This one's gonna be a ride, so fasten those seatbelts and enjoy the video. Previously, we were wrapping up the main Desert Treasure 2 boss grinds like the Blood Torver Challenge and the new Best in Slot Rings. You will see the final Desert Treasure 2 item grinds in this video. I finished these with some time left before leaks 4. I figured Hey, I might as well revisit some old goals before Leagues 4 starts. I have so many of those. So there's some age-old grinds I started but never got to finish because I went really dry and ran out of motivation or time. Gauntlet Pet was one of those unfinished business grinds I started like 4 plus years ago. And I somewhat gave up after reaching like 2000 kills. I think at that point I was like rank 10 for Ironman for Gauntlet or something. Occasionally I would get the spark back and try to do a few in between major grinds because I truly never gave up. I've been here so long that I've been trying to find ways to improve my kills such as learning how to melee run the tornadoes and I would say it's worth it if you're gonna do like a thousand plus kills but if you're hoping to just get the enhanced seed and get out of here yeah it's probably not worth it you'll die a ton trying to get good at this. If you do want to try learning this method, you need to be at least, uh, I want to say, three to four tiles away from the boss so you can get the drag because Hallie is a two tile range. I have not seen most of you guys this year, so happy new years. Hope things are going good. That you guys get some nice clothes though for the holidays. If not, Into the AM, our sponsor can absolutely kit you out with some really stylish clothes at an affordable price. Their store has a wide variety of shirts and bottom wears that fits the mature gamer vibe. I had such an easy time finding clothes that really resonate with me. Let me show you what I got from Into the AM. So I got three t-shirts, one long sleeve shirt, and one outer wear. For the t-shirts, I got their Trinkle Ascent, the Tree of Knowledge, and the Tangerine Tides. I also got their Everyday Bomber Jacket and their long sleeve branded shirt. The size fit was all perfect for these clothes, exactly what I expected from the medium size. Also the material is super comfortable to wear as well which is a huge plus. You will see me rocking these into the AM clothes during streams and my viewers are definitely digging them. Right now they're letting you buy 3 custom graphic tees as a bundle for only $60. And if you use my link in the description, you can get an extra 10% off on your tea purchases. Upgrade your look for 2024 with some comfy and cool looking clothes from Into the AM. Thank you guys for listening. Oh, I got an armor C. Yay. No, I'm like on, on raid, I guess, for it. It might be fun to talk a little bit about the Corrupted Gauntlet's history from when I first started grinding this content to today's progress because that's over 4 years of time. When the Gauntlet first came out, there was only the Crystal Armor that supported the regular Crystal Bow and the Blade of Saldor. There was no Enhanced Weapon C yet. This place used to be considered niche content and it was significantly harder as well, so only a few people were doing this content. For example, Hunliv didn't have any in-game sounds or graphics to let you know that it's changing attacks. A lot of people used to use the uh, perp voice counter. I did the content so much that my brain kind of knew the timer for when it would switch attacks. Another messed up part about Super OG Hunliv was that it could start the fight with any style. So half the time you would go in there and just get sniped for a 50. I initially went for the Blade of Saldor for the best in slot one-handed sword and I got it around 540kc. I had a good amount of free time though, so I decided I want to go for the pet because it was one of the sickest pets at the time and it was rare, not many people were doing the gauntlet. I probably went over a thousand KC in a row and I took a break though for new content. Sometime around 2020, Jagex buffed the magic staff to be on par with the bow and the Halley which gave me more motivation to try for the pet again. And then I reached around a 2000 KC this time without the pet. New content came out once again, so I lost motivation after being almost 3 times dry. Finally in 2021, Jagex nerfed the blowpipe and added the Bofa and the Enhanced Seed to Corrupt the Gauntlet, and it became incredibly popular endgame content, or at least the start of endgame, for Iron Man's and of course for mains because of the money. So now I just do a few here and there when I'm in the mood for the pet. Most recently, after blowing through 10,000 plus dry arrows, grinding next, I decided I should head back to do some Corrupted Gauntlet because it gives some humble amounts of Dragon Arrows and maybe this time I can get the pet. Oh my god, dude. Three Dragon Arrows in a row. 200 Dragon Arrows in three runs. 
That's that's rare. Oh my god. There we go. 2400 KC. All right. If I don't get the pet now, then I'm officially three times dry. <laughs> Pharmacy, let's go. Yay. Oh, so close, damn. Almost seven kills an hour. That's a PB, though. Damn, look at these hits. Nice. Okay, that's gotta be like a sub three, man. Easily. 224. Okay, that was like way fat. Okay, that was disgusting. Anything good? Dry arrows? Oh, Pharmacy. Yo, let's go. Oh, it does make a noise now when it changes. They added some sound effects to this boss for when it changes attack styles, so. 2500 gauntlet, Casey. Holy smokes, boys. That is an insane number, but we must keep going. Let's see. Dragon arrows. Yes, we're almost back to 10k. 8000 dragon arrows. Yes. Wait, this guy doesn't notice me? Dude, usually he notices me from like a billion miles away. Oh, another armor seed. Well, I haven't gotten any in a bit. I'm actually behind on a weapon seed, an enhanced weapon seed. The RNG is starting to uh, go the opposite way, huh? Oh, yo. Now we finally averaged out on the weapon seed. Six and yeah, that's 2400 KC normally, so. All right. I can't believe it, dude. Two pets in two days, and they're not, like, easy pets. Holy shit, that actually happened. Destiny, dude. Holy sh Waiting a very long time for this. Approximately 400 hours if I did these gauntlets at nine and a half. And I did 500-ish gauntlets just going for the blade when it first came out, so... 330 hours or something was purely finding for this pet i've died 182 times the gauntlet high score is so active now compared to when i first started this grind because of the bofa update and the blowpipe nerf looks like i'm now rank 44 on the iron man high scores so most of these guys above me i'm going to assume are probably pen hunting like me or just gone really really dry on hand seed i've heard some nightmare stories of people going 2000 plus dry now, for the loot, I wasn't able to keep track of all of it as it happened throughout the years, but I did manage to track the last 557. It should be fine to extrapolate from this loot here because I ended up going super average for all the very pricey stuff, like the enhanced and armor seats. So we have about 243 mil made in 557 kills. This would mean the overall value from about 2600 kills was 1.2 billion GP. Tons of this value is pure GP and alcables, which is pretty nice. But the biggest resource that's useful for me is the dragon arrows. Doing 2600 gauntlets gave me approximately 20,000 dragon arrows. Unfortunately though, most of these have already been used up at necks and raids and whatnot. But yeah, I still managed to save some. 2600 clean. Oh my god. Sub 3 minute kill. And that's it. No new clue. But all good. Hopefully we don't have to change this number ever again. So, one last thing about the Corrupted Gauntlet grind is the Crystal Shards. What am I going to do with it, right? So, most of these, for sure, I'm going to use it to make the Crystal Shards to make the Vine Potions. Because they're super good. I use the Vine Potions all the time. But, of course, I have, like, so much, right? So, 40 Crystal Armor Seeds and, like, all this Crystal Shard. That's around 20, like, 3,000 Crystal Shards, right? I could do something else with it besides the Vine Potions. And that is to use this to make an Enhanced Crystal Key. Crystal Key added with the crystal shard 10 of them you get one right so on average i can get one dragon stone armor which is collection lock stuff in 600 keys so it's crazy rare and it takes a lot of shards right 600 keys for example would take 6,000 shards i did the math and i figured out i can either do a combination of the vine pots and crystal keys or just do like the vine pots only. And I can make like 55,000 the vine pots with what I have. And that's a lot. I don't think I'll ever use it that many. So what I can do is I can actually do maybe 40,000 the vine pots. So that means I keep like 75% of these shards and use 25% on the keys. So 25% of this on keys would be around 
uh, 600 to 800 keys. I also get like 25% of my crystal shards back. So like the 600 would probably give me an extra like 100, you know, 200 even. So yeah, I can do 25% of these into enhanced crystal keys. That's going to be in the future in one of my stacking projects. So look forward to that if you're interested. Well, that is one super old goal finally done. Now let's catch up on the Desert Treasure 2 grinds. These events are a little bit out of order because in the last video, I was grinding for the Vardorvis pet and I never covered the Whisperer and Duke grinds for their rings. I was waiting a long time to make this Ancient Gods or video to go along with the Vardorvis because I used it a lot there. So I put the Vardorvis progress out a bit earlier. The plan was to grind off Whisperer for the Bellator ring because I can use the Bellator ring best in slot slash ring for the Vardorvis and Duke bosses as it is best in slot ring for those two bosses. So it would be really fun a combo. So now we head over to Whisperer to get this bell to ring first. Oh my god, no way. I, I can't believe I got a second freaking uh, piece of the Solby Brax. I'm not making another one, screw that. I really don't think I, I want to go back to uh, Leviathan, for example. 300 KC, we're uh, over halfway to the ring right now, boys. Damn, I just got 1,400 soul runes. Oh, so good. Perfect kill on that one. Whoa, 105 battle staffs. Holy. Damn, that's 800k. That's a really good drop. Oh, so good. You really want to get those perfect kills on soul runes, though. So nice. It's like a slow kill. What? Dragon Plate Skirt 10? Oh my god. Note this. Dude, look at, look at the German plate skirt now, dude. It's just floating on top of the sky. That's definitely what's going to happen. I'll bring Cabbage Ring for this boss, just in case. Also, I guess maybe for, uh, for Duke too. Chromium Ingot. Yes. Let's go. Chromium Ingot. I think I'm 11 out of 12 or 12 out of 12. All right, let me check here. Let's see how many Ingots we have. 12. Yes, this is the last one. What? I got a first row top? Oh my god, dude, that's my second one. <laughs> what the hell? That's my second one, dude. Damn, it's actually pretty pricey. It doesn't matter for me, but it's cool to see that the item is holding value. Holy shit, I got my second Virtus. Dude, what a trip, dude. True Chromium gets Virtus row top. Like, what the hell? Nice, 400 KC, 112 more to go. Oh, Dragon Place Kurt, but guess what? I have my cabbage ring this time, so I can actually do this. Oh! Oh my god, I got it! Yo! No way, 409, dude. Lucky. Lucky, lucky, lucky. What? Builder Fistish? Damn, that's 103 kills earlier than uh, than the usual. Hell yeah. Let's go. Alright, alright. I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that, man. I think I'll just leave Whisper for now. We do want to get the pet eventually, but I think I'll come back. All right, so let's break the warrior ring. There we go. Then we add this with blood runes to make the Bellator icon, right? And then we uh, craft the Bellator ring just like that. And here it is, new BIS slash ring. Like, this ring is super interesting because it's a direct upgrade to a Warriors ring, of course, but it's unusual because the Warriors ring has no strength bonus whatsoever. But you get 20 slash, which is over double the amount of slash that you, you get normally. And you also get six strength bonus. So that's one and a half max hits with this ring and 20 slash. So this works really well, basically, with slash weapons. So, Desert Treasure 2 bosses, Vardavis, like, Duke, right, uh, Theater Blood, right? A slash weapon would really, really, uh, take advantage of that. So, things like BGS, uh, Scythe, even the Fang with slash option. Alright, with the Belter obtained, we can now use the best setups possible for Duke Succulus. Duke's a very tanky boss, the extra 20 slash will be an amazing addition to speeding up this boss kill. Especially for that BGS spec, I really want to land that spec. Our goal is to get the Magus Ring from Duke, the new best in slot magic ring, which will complete our Desert Treasure 2, aka best in slot ring set, and also gonna be very useful for PVMing. 
The method that I'm doing to wake up Duke Succulus is the fastest method, it involves tick manipulating. You typically use the teak log and a knife, and you start one top before the mushroom. So you do the action with the teak log and the knife, prepare the animation, and then you click on the mushroom. And it works, you get extra really fast. Now, the only downside is that you have to spam click the grounded mushrooms on the boss like 40 times per kill though. So if you don't like clicking a lot, this is definitely not the method for you. But this is the fastest method. Uh, actually, it's so easy to do this if you just click ahead. Doesn't have to be the mushroom the next thing. Just click ahead and then click on the mushroom. That way you'll like never misclick. Imagine. Oh, look at that. Right off the bat, dude. I was... Oh my god, dude. I'm already feeling the slash accuracy. God damn, what a difference. 20 slash accuracy on this boss is insane. The Scythe of Vitzer, no matter what happens, whether you land a BGS or not, is always better than the Fang at this boss because you can do 3x damage. But... I still bring it because in the event I do miss, the Fang isn't that much worse than the Scythe. And I don't waste any charges, so that's why I do bring it. But you don't really need to if you have a Scythe, just letting you guys know. A 7 HP. Oh my god, I got another ingot. So many. You can make an extra ring, I guess. I don't even bring Pestle or Mortar for the strat because you just grab one here anyways, so... So the gas vents are actually very predictable. Once you know where the gas spawns the first kill of your trip, then it's going to repeat that every time when you start the next kill. So let's say you saw the middle vent next to the boss spawn the gas. That means by the time you make it to the boss, the middle vent should be safe. And it's going to be safe every kill of that trip, as far as I'm aware. But it does change patterns when you leave. But all you got to do is remember the first pattern for the first kill of the trip every time and that's it you don't have to think about where the gas will spawn you already know <gasps> what no way no second axe piece uh dupe axe piece bruh nice finish what no fucking way i just got a third axe piece bruh two two in one day how that's insane oh, oh. impossible that's that's like ridiculous oh my god <laughs> oh damn it's a pretty good trip guys we made like four point something mil, but that's because of the two orbs otherwise 500k oh oh perfect on the dragon arrow tips yes so good oh my god huh nice we have 400k c pretty good milestone oh we did nice hit 500 200 more and change to go i've always wondered where the hell the boss's normal hp bar is it's freaking on like the roof basically of the game so yeah it's i guess gigantic implied oh my god magus fish this holy shit it's 583 nice dude we got lucky on that too nice looks like desert treasure 2 uh grinds the worst part of it was definitely just the uh, sorry brags, but even that wasn't terrible. Oh, nice boys. We got the uh, BIS magic ring. And honestly, man, you know, Duke, it was it was nice killing you. I might come back for the pet one day, but uh, for now, I'm happy with getting the sorry brags piece and the mag magus piece here because we're going to make this ring. So it's been apparently six weeks or so one and a half months, but in one and a half months, we have managed to complete all the drops from Desert Treasure, minus the pets. So, uh, yeah, uh, that is pretty crazy. Magus Ring done. I'm gonna definitely look forward to using this. It looked nice, man. We got Venator first, followed by Ulcer, and then Bellator and Magus, finally. Alright, before anybody asks, Augury doesn't increase any max hits. So, we're not gonna keep it on, but... But the new ring, it's 45 with Trident. Let's see what happens. Oh, nice. It is actually one max hit. Really good. All right, what about Sang? What we got here? 46. Might still be 46. Okay, it doesn't really change with Sang. What about Shadow? Shadow definitely should change quite a bit. Damn, 66 from what? 64? Oh, damn. Two max with Shadow, of course. 
that multiplier thing going on with the shadow is pretty nuts. All right, how about shadow on task? What do we got here? 73? Oh my days. What was it before? 70? I think it was 70 before. Yeah, wow. Three max hits on Slayer task. We're going to do Trident again on task with the new ring. 50. Oh my god. Saying? 52. Damn. 51. Okay. Without the ring. What was it without the ring for the Trident? 50? Oh, it's the same. Okay, Trident didn't change, actually. Okay. Well, there you have it. Sometimes you get a max hit with the trident and the saying, and sometimes you don't. But with the shadow, you definitely get max hits though. So, oh, I remember what I wanted to do when I got the Magus ring. I want to go ahead and finish the um, logs for God Wars. When I mean finish, I mean like just refill the logs because I did everything pre-log. So, things like Bandos, General Gador. Uh, it'd be nice to just get this Tacit out of the way finally, and, uh, Ceridomen, where is Ceridomen? Commander Ceridomen, and also Commander Ceridomen. Yeah, we should definitely just reobtain this hilt, reobtain the crossbow. I guess we can go back to Armadale, too, just to get the pet there. Uh, what's the Kriara boss? We still haven't gotten that pet, we're not dry or anything, but... But yeah, with the Magus Ring... Ooh, Magus Ring, Shadow, Armadale, damn, it's gonna be spicy, that... That will probably absolutely smoke the boss. But yeah, this Magus Ring, oh my god, look at the accuracy too, I forgot to mention that. Good shout to uh, Elite here. We just gained like basically, what, like 45 magic accuracy or something? Crazy. Uh, let's just go to TOA for show, because uh, we can show you the 4x multiplier. It's 3x outside of TOA, but it's 4x in TOA, so look at this. 656 magic accuracy. And then 100% magic damage. It's completely capped. It cannot go higher than that with the shadow. The multiplier is capped to 100%. But you get double your magic damage. Right? It wasn't capped before though. But with this ring, it is capped. Perfectly capped. Wow. Alright, boys and girls. I am gonna be buying some stuff from the League's Assistant. Because... We have finished up leagues, and uh, we got a lot of points. 65,000 to be exact, but I already had so many points from the other leagues I played. But yeah, if I claim trophies, I should say I have who <laughs> the Dragon Ring trophy, but yeah. It's pretty cool, although I never really actually rock it though. But yeah, I can just get it back from her anytime I want. Alright, anyways, there is a few kits I want to buy. I'm not going to buy all of them, just because... I don't really want to, you know, waste too much bank space, but uh, there's some I definitely want. Uh, so we got the alchemy spell. I think I'll rock it, you know, just because regular alchemy is getting a little boring. The rejuvenation pool, I'll rock it. I'll show you guys all the stuff that I do buy. Uh, vengeance scroll, I'll rock it. Death one, I'll rock it. Although most of these, I swear a lot of people will eventually ask me, what, what the heck is that? How are you doing that? But it's okay. It's worth it. It's worth it. Uh, let me see. Alright, blowpipe kit. I want that. Alright, first thing I want to show you is the blowpipe kit. Alright, let's do it. Woohoo, this looks sick. I also have magma mutagen too. So, uh, I can rock this for a bit. It's nice to have a change in look. Yeah, look at that. It is beautiful. Alright, we're going to unlock the alchemy spell here. And uh, it looks like this. It's uh, just flames, pretty much. Alright, so I really don't want this thing to look like it's from the chocolate factory, so we're gonna turn this to the flames. Oh. Alright, let's do this now. We're gonna use this on here. And then it looks like a fear ornament full of rejuvenation. Hell yeah. That's pretty sick. Alright, we're gonna do the vengeance scroll one as well. Alright, so we're gonna switch to Lunar for this so I can show you. Oh, damn, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> that is pretty insane. And then the uh, death animation one. Okay, so we're going to die now. Using the ultimate Iron Man strat. And uh, watch this death animation. Dang, my entire character literally just burns. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sick. Alright, I gotta grab my stuff back. But yeah, that's everything.